Yes, this is my greenhouse project. Uh, I made a few mistakes and had a few successes, so I thought I'd pass them both on to you here, too, if, in case it helps out anybody. Well, this is an earlier picture from late winter, early spring. You know, I use it for a lot of gardening stuff. And what you can't tell from this picture, it's sunk in the ground about three feet. I found that sunken greenhouse thing really helps to keep it warmer in winter and, and cooler in the summer. I use spiral staircases. It's a really kind of a tight space hidden here. If I used, had traditional steps, it probably I'd have a room full of steps. So spirals quite nice here too. The uh, tables were just cutoffs from deck, a deck project. Um, I just made the metal frames there and they kind of hang on that little ledge there. But they work really well. Now the hydroponics, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but they have wood inserts because of the moisture we have in here yeah, it's, they will rot out and have to replace them every few years. This greenhouse is probably eight or nine years old right now, so it's, uh, it's been holding up pretty good. Um, the green barrel, that's just for water storage, but works great in the wintertime for heat. And the flooring I used were just 16-inch uh, square uh, patio blocks, or uh, concrete patio blocks, and they're on about a Ooh, three to four inch bed of really finely ground limestone. So it makes them repairable, but also it drains really well in case I get some rain in or have an overflow or something here too. The windows were a project I got. Uh, they were just, uh, there was a dorm being torn down, so I was able to get them really dirt cheap. And I like glass. I do not like the polycarbonate stuff. That kind of needs to be placed in every decade or so. And I found out that anything with the greenhouse in the title is expensive. So this is actually shelving glass. It's tempered glass, 3 16 I made these aluminum squares and bolted them under a T aluminum just to kind of hold them in place. And this is looking at the greenhouse from the outside on the deck. And uh, they, each of the squares kind of interlock uh, for waterproofing, just to kind of have it. Uh, and it's been working really well. Um, yeah, I put some flashing across the top, and it really kind of holds it pretty good. Because they're aluminum, I thought there'd be a lot of a, uh, growth between winter times. So that's why I had those little adjustable um, hinges. Now, here's a mistake. I used plywood for the uh, spiral staircase, and boy, plywood does not hold up in this humidity. It like rains in here during the wintertime. I should have made it out of the um, decking material, and I'll probably do that again. The glass itself was about 800 pounds of weight, so I built another, put another T across there and built some other supports into and built that truss structure right there too to help support. And It's been doing real well. I've had quite a lot of snow load on here and um, it's held up really well. Now this is the hydroponic inserts I use then too. This shows you the old X10 stuff. And X10 does work. It's old technology, but uh, lately I've not been using it. I've just been plugging things in directly. But um, it, it's a real nice way to have salad during the winter time. And this is how I prep them. These are four gallon containers and I put one of these um, bulkheads into the bottom of it, drill a hole. And that piece of PVC piping, that's just a closed piece for a spacer because this is the lid in which I just drill a lot of holes into. And that actually is more of a filter, but it gives it so there's a little space between the filter and the drain. Because I don't want these balls falling through here. These are little um, ceramic expanded clay I use for the hydroponic material. And that little hole you saw there, that's what this gray thing is with the holes in it. That's an overflow. That's the upper overflow. Just in case I have a little plugging. And I mean, some of my tomatoes sometimes can be a couple years old and they get sort of root bound here too. So in case there's ever a problem, it's always wise to have an upper overflow drain as well. Um, this is my mixing tank. This is a six and a half gallon tank. And I have a um, float valve in there from a 35 gallon tank there from my uh, rain barrel. But I just basically mix this as I need it, uh, the solution I use for my hydroponics into. And you see a big plastic um, covering over my, over my tank here. That's advisable. If you just have tanks open to sun like that, like that you're going to get a lot of algae growth inside. So it's better to have this covered. I do tear the whole thing apart every year and clean it up and sterilize it and sanitize it the best I possibly can. So that's the filter coming from the uh, water barrel. Now I use this uh, little giant pump. This is a spare I got in case the other one goes bad, but you know, it's approaching, well, probably over 10 years between this project and an earlier project. Um, so yeah, these have been just rock solid for me. I, re I really recommend these little pumps in too. 
Um, I the controller I used for these control these pumps. This is the old picture here. Now what I do, I water these about four times an hour, but only for 10-15 seconds, and of course less at night. And I used to use this program, which is PC based, and I realized I was spending close to eighty dollars a year just to run this for electricity. I thought, no, I, I did learn a lot programming this and getting it up and running, but uh, I had to let this one go when we went solar. So what I did, I replaced this with an Arduino controller. It runs on two dollars a year, and here it is. In fact, anyone who saw my video of how to make a printed circuit board, this is the actual um, printed circuit board I made in that video. That red little square in the left, upper left hand corner, that's a real time clock module, kind of keeps tracking the time. And of course, there's an X10 transmitter on board here, too, that's built right into the Arduino shield. That's how I can control any X10 things I want, then, too. But um, yeah, all, this information all, is all available uh, on GitHub in case anybody wants to replicate this. And this is the controller all put together. There's only three switches. I have kind of a master switch to let me scroll through the different screens and up and down buttons. That way I can adjust the settings on the fly. Um, the upper left, that is actually the temperature sensor. Uh, put it outside, otherwise it's going to be uh, give you erroneous readings because electronics inside are going to heat up the box in a little bit. Now what I did down here, the one on the right is normal, which means it's just like an extension cord. But now that one on the left is controlled by the solid state relay. So I can plug my pump into that and it will control it just perfectly fine. Now this is the default screen when it powers up. It's got the time, uh, time temperature, high temperature and low temperature. And TE is temperature extreme, the high or low of the day. Um, I can adjust what time the, or temperature the fan comes on here. There is a default setting, of course, but I can, I can raise it and lower as I need it. And, and since I realized once the temperature goes up and turns the fan on, well, what I've done here, here in this screen, I've increased the watering period. So if it's hot, well, I'm going to run it longer. If it's cooler, I'm not going to run the pop on as long. Um, this is an override for the C1 X10 controls. I know X10 is old stuff, but it works very well if you get the right situation then too. But I can manually just turn, override the system and turn the controller on and off. I did the same for the pump, and that controls both the X10 as well as the solid state relay. So I have a manual control on that if I want, it's, you know, just for testing and trying when, you know, the system out here too. Um, I went on and added a few other features on this here too, as long as I had it. This just can, this reset just tells me when it was reset last, in case I, there was a power failure. And the F1, that's fan one, uh, just what the X10 numbers are too. And I added a heater with this system, so if, it, if the temperature drops down to a you know certain minimum, it'll, it'll send out an X10 command to like a milk house heater or something, just to keep things from freezing. So, and this basically is the history. It has a couple of little things we'll scroll through there on uh, showing exactly what the last signal was. This helps for troubleshooting, just to make sure that, you know, it's sending the signals out and you should be seeing things in two. And hit the button one more time, of course, it just rolls right down to the original screen then too. Um, I do have a little small short video, video here of this history. Again, I, I found this helpful when I was just trouble, trying to get things all troubleshot. But it tells you what the last command was and the time um, of what it was. Now, this is the artwork for the Arduino Shield. I've already uploaded this to GitHub if anybody wants to replicate this. And hopefully there's enough information on here that you can just make this and watch my video how to make a printed circuit board. And then you can make your own printed circuit board. The uh, Arduino code that runs that little program you saw, that's actually on uh, GitHub as well. So J-T-O-T-N-A-T. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, if this helps you, fantastic. Uh, don't make the mistakes that I have. And I hope you're as successful as, as I've been. So anyway, have a good one.